right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two Guys and Some More. Tonight we got a bonus episode for you for this lovely Friday the 13th. So as such, we're talking about Jason X, Friday the 13th. (laughs) Ha ha, got you good, fuckers. The best uh, Friday the 13th movie ever made. Um, And I say that with all sarcasm intended. Curtis, how are you doing today? Terrible because we watched Jason X. <laughs> so, I, I am so I'm glad we're getting this one out of the way though. Oh um, man, I when I was watching this film, I was like, I am watching a lower budget f- version of Aliens the entire time because you have the Marines, you have the thing they're chasing, and then you have the bigger thing and that a spaceship. Comes out. Yeah, and a spaceship. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. There is a spaceship too. Um, but I think Aliens, well, no, no, Aliens 3, Aliens 3 happened on a planet, that, like, prison planet. You're right. That's the sequel spaceship. to Jason X that we never got, thank God. Oh, uh, God. Well, they, the ending didn't make any sense either, because, like, they see a meteorite over Camp Crystal Lake, and the Earth is supposedly uninhabitable. Earth 2. Earth 2. It was Earth 2 that yeah. he flew over. They specifically did that so they could leave it open for a sequel if they wanted it. But this movie flopped so bad, which it should have. That they never got a sequel. Thank you God. know, it, it grossed like $13 million or $16 million worldwide, which is more than they spent, which so, is about $11 million. So here, I'm, I'm confused on that. Here's my beef with the numbers. Does that number just box office, just include box office or after theater sales? Because this movie actually did well. It did better after the post-theater sales. Statistically, it's the most successful film in the franchise, but only after it's run in the theater. I think so. I think I think this is counting everything after opening weekend though was like six point six yeah okay million which was still quite a bit. So I don't I don't know if they they made everything after opening, but um, I would assume I would assume so maybe because we don't I don't think we get DVD sales. I don't think we get that ongoing stuff. Well, that's one of our fun and, facts. Yeah, this is box office. <laughs> so box office we had about seventeen million cumulative worldwide, which I would say yeah they made their money back. I, hands down, one of the worst movies I have watched in a while. Not as bad as Infinite Santa. Okay. Uh, this, yep, that's this... our gauge. That, sadly, yeah. that's, our, that's <laughs> our floor still. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, this is, this is, uh, this is hot garbage. It was hot garbage. Um, well, let's, let's make this quick and let's make this fun for the listeners because um, that's what they're here for. They love to hear our opinion on these movies. And uh, we love to see that you guys are having fun with us. Um, so let me give you the run through of the movie real quick. Um, so Jason X, that's the film we're doing. Its uh, release was 2001. Um, the director was James Isaac. You might know him from special effects work on the film Gremlins. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, no. Well, what never. about House 2? Oh, no, that? never, never. Either one of these movies. We haven't done <laughs> podcasts on these movies either. No, we don't have any previous episodes that you could go check out we we do but the the writer um they always give victor miller credit because he's the one who came up with jason um and the friday the 13th series uh but todd farmer who did the screenplay for my bloody valentine the Mm -hmm. remake and he also did this is my favorite part of his trivia air hogs extreme tv commercial i saw that yeah that's freaking hilarious budget like you said was 11 million body count i got was 25 25 yeah so we'll there Yes and no. I don't. I don't know if I count the VR kills. I. You know what? I. I wouldn't count them either. But would you count the android kill as well? Because she doesn't technically die. No. No. Because she's alive. She does not count actually on that count. I did not include her. No. The, that was uh, the VR kill is probably the best scene in the whole movie. Yes. It's Just homage. to be bluntly honest. It's homage. Yeah. To the uh, part seven. Okay, so here's the quick synopsis. Or actually, hellos, how are you? So we good? Did we say I, hi? Hi. Um, it's a bonus great. episode, so it's kind of so weird. It doesn't really matter so Formats much here. Off. I love your we, hair today. Thank you. Look you great, thank buddy. you. We need to go through the uh, the march, maybe, but I don't know. Other than that, we should be fine. For all the audio files out there, crank the volume to 11, because we're getting started. So you have a, a opening scene. You have... Dr. Wimmer, played by the David Cronenberg, um, he's coming to take Jason because they feel anyone who can regenerate and not die is worth doing science experiments on. But 
Obviously, his plan fails him, and Jason breaks free, killing a bunch of people. Luckily, though, um, I can't remember her name, though, so this isn't good. Uh, You're talking about the heroine? Yeah, the main chick. Rowan. Oh, is it really? Yeah, oh. Lexa Doig. Okay, yeah. He's Rowan. Rowan does a smart move, gets Jason into a cryogenic freeze chamber, freezes his ass, but in the process gets stabbed. She now is bleeding out, but the cryogenic freezer also is allowing the freezing chemicals to envelop her. So both of them get frozen. Um, fast forward, that was technically 2010. Fast forward to like, what is it, 2094? Mm. Something like that? 400 years. 400 years. Is it 400? It's four over 400 years, yeah. My Lanta. So, fast forward 400 years, and a military group uh, stumbles upon Jason's frozen body and Rowan's frozen body, um, and they decide to take them back to a ship. Now, the doctor on the ship um, gets greedy because he finds out that this Jason guy... The professor, I believe, is professor what they call Lowe? him, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Professor finds out that, Brandon Lowe. That Jason is worth tons of money to the right buyer because he was some sick, sadistic killer who killed 200 people back in the day. Blah, blah, blah. Well, it's his recovery. How fast he recovers, too, is that he, he's the thinking... The whole... Yeah, the whole yeah. kit, right? And what's your face, like, warns him about it, even... But, you know, the whole, oh, I got to keep him alive. And so they revive her and then they're doing the autopsy on him. Yep. And during, while they're doing the autopsy on him, premarital sex is going on. And if you know Jason, when premarital sex happens, that means shit's going to go down. So as soon as the kids start boinking, Jason pulls out he finds a weapon and he, well, he fights liquid nitrogen, sprays a girl in the face. Smashes her. Glorious kill. Beautiful. Loved it. That is my favorite kill of the film. It's. I agree. That's probably one of the best Jason kills. I believe the um, the guys from Kill Count, one of uh, the YouTube channels, they do a really good job of breaking down all the kills of horror films. Um, he gave it the Golden Machete Award. Mm. Um, but yeah, he dumps her face into a sink filled with liquid nitrogen, freezes it, and you get to see the full effect of it take over her face lifts her head out, and then smashes it, and you see her whole face break off, basically. And he just kind of really looks nice. at her confused, and then he shrugs and walks off. You know, okay, so I say I like that kill, um, but I'm going to give a little bit of fun fact and trivia right now, too. Because mm. um, when they come up, it's just more fun to give it to it right then and there. So this film was the first in the franchise to use digital effects over mm. uh, practical effects. So everything you see when it comes to the kills, death, and gore is all digital. Even when Stoney gets impaled by the surgical tool? A lot, yeah. They yeah. say that they use no practical effects, all digital effects, which I found mm. very weird because I didn't look at this movie and go, wow, I hate all these digital effects. Like, most of the kills in the movie actually look okay. They look fine to me. The only ones that get weird are the VR ones, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, regardless, like, Jason's out. He's killing everybody now. People are recognizing, hey, this guy's out. We just lost two of our people. Uh, Kinsa, whoever, the, the girl that was having sex with uh, with Stoney. Mm -hmm. um, I think she leaves and tells like their sergeant. Yeah. The big the big black sergeant. Sergeant Brodsky. Brodsky, yeah. So the dude gets killed. He gets... Yep, <sighs> impaled. Impaled with the machete. With the It looks like a futuristic machete. Is yeah. what now he's using to walk around and kill with. While the soldiers are getting ready to find Jason now, like two guys are playing a video game, and Jason kills them in the game. And Which, by the way, that might be one of my favorite characters. I believe his name was Azrael, the kid, the yeah. long-haired kid. Um, well, he he keeps killing them, and then they the turn they kid. turn the video game off. Yeah, the kid who lost his hand at the very beginning, or arm, or whatever. Yeah, they. Uh, Which gives us our first look at nanotechnology. Yeah. In this film, which was huge back in the early 2000s. Everything was nano this, nano that. Mm. Keep going. Well, he, he <laughs> gets cut in, he gets cut in half as soon as the video game gets turned off. The other guy gets his head smashed in a wall. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, and do you know who that guy was? That was Todd Farmer, the writer of this film. Oh. He played the character Dallas, which is named after the character from Alien, which is what he based this entire movie on. <laughs> which we can tell. Oh my god. What a load of shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, yeah, he definitely. So these are the alien Marines. Jason is the alien. Um, he doesn't 
impregnate anybody. Still love that, the, that, that we sex know about. awakens Jason. Well, like, it's, to it, your point, like that was their kids and their 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 nubile and the energy, the sexual energy. It's just it's what powers him really. And then the murder is just like the continuation. And then Jason Machete's that yeah. dude, and the blood splats <laughs> on the chick's face. Oh yeah. See, that had to be practical. How would that be digital? It Anyways, might have been practical. Like fake blood's not too expensive in small amounts. VR game scene. I think we need to reboot. He's not pausing. Did you not find that funny? No. No, um, I just... The fact that they thought he was part of the game was just goofy. Well, no one knows who he is now at this point, 400 years later. Yeah, but they uh, this this lady has warned them. They're on comms. They have comms to, to at least to have some sort of conversation going on. Mm-hmm. Even in the game, you would, you would assume that there'd be some sort of speakers. Hey, we got a killer loose. Maybe don't... Yeah. But instead, they're they're playing their game. They're not paying attention to anything. Dude, the level in the game that they're playing reminds me a lot of um, the Laser Quest place that we go to for mm. Laser Tag. Yeah. Just thought, sorry, I can see that. listeners, sorry. That's like a <laughs> random side note. So the good old BFG. Sergeant Bros, he asks his guy, you got the BFG? The big friendly gun? The big fucking gun. No, it's friendly, though. Because the gun's friendly. It just, <laughs> it's from, it loves, yeah, it's, it's a from reference Doom. to Doom. And um, yeah. they said another game, and I can't remember which one it was. Well, we'll Doom there. and then Quake, I think. Quake. Quake, which is the spiritual successor to Doom. Back yeah. in the day. Um, so now they're wandering through the ship hunting Jason. Right. The Marines. Um, well, they and, find and, him. Well, they're not doing a really good job of working as a unit. They all seem to be kind of spread out. Um, I don't know if that's just the Marine way or in this movie, the way they're depicting how Marines are so badass that they don't need to stay together and work as a team. Yeah, they all split up and Jason just kills them one by one. Yeah, he picks them up. He just we don't even get really a lot of great kills. Well, he snaps one of their necks, he yeah. impales one of them on a drill, uh, slits someone's throat, just... One Takes out guy. the entire squadron, man. He just fucks them they, all. They they impale Jason in the back. He gets shot. Um, he gets impaled on like a, like a meat hook or, mm-hmm. or whatever it was, like a meat hook crane thing. Yeah, a grapple. And then what's his face? The uh, the main guy, bro, Mister Broski's like, you watch him, and the guy's like, okay. He turns around. You don't have to worry about anything. Jason's one arm picks himself off the hook, kills the guy. By the way, congratulations to Kane Hodder, because he got to come back for another Friday yeah. the 13th film. Oh, sorry, another Jason film. Got to be very careful here. Since New Line took over, they can't call it Friday the 13th. They have to drop that. They don't have the rights. But Kane did get to come back and reprise his role as Jason Voorhees. This was, unfortunately, Kane's last film mm. as Jason. But, God, Kane, you did such a great job as Jason. I loved it. Um, Man, those... <laughs> I just feel like those Marines could have done a much better job if they had just stuck together instead of, like, going off on their own and trying to, you know... Well, yeah, but even at that point, they're, like, talking to the pilot, and the pilot's like, oh, I'm in trouble, Jason's in the room, and the pilot dies. And you'd think there'd be some sort of security blocking Jason from getting to every single location, especially the helm of the ship. Okay, so rewind to the very beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. Jason gets off the hook, puts the soldier on the hook, jackets him, disappears right allows full-blown conversations to go on then makes himself known kills the soldiers all that stuff the chicks outside the doors open he never walked through that door where does he appear right behind her outside in the hallway it's that whole old school 80s vhs fast forward thing that the they do Jason's in the game transportation yeah yeah he somehow teleports so i don't care what security system you have if you're in a jason film he's getting through it it doesn't matter at that point. Um, but, yes, I agree with you. That pilot, I mean, he's the last person who should have been killed. He should have been the most protected person on the damn ship. Because after he kills the pilot, what ends up happening? They freaking crash the ship into Solaris, the space station where everybody lives, um, which housed 19,727 people. Mm-hmm. Gone. Blown up. Everybody's dead. Yep. Great. But the ship continues on. Jason, he he's very efficient. He knows what he's doing. You know, I haven't murdered over nineteen thousand people in a movie. So there there goes your body count. It's almost twenty thousand people yeah, at this point. They don't. Um, 
That's that's outside the limit. We don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't, count, we don't that. count that. We don't count accidental ship uh, collision. He wasn't even in the helm when it crashed. He walked away. <laughs> I, I think it's Jason. Jason takes the the credit. Jason for gets that. credit. All right. Oh yeah, one hundred. Our new number is now nineteen thousand seven hundred and sixty-two. Almost twenty, Jason. Not quite, but you know, with your past endeavors, <laughs> you've hit it. So you've good. hit twenty k. Congratulations. Uh, anyhow, like the 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 lead guy and what's his face they. they Fasting forward, a bunch of stuff happens. Jason shows up. This guy makes out with his android, and the android all of a sudden's like, "All oh, our chances of survival went up fifty percent." And he's like, "Let's try for a hundred. And then they, they, they coitus, they coitus, yeah. and she becomes a super powerful android. And she and Jason fight, and she pew pews and she kicks the shit out of she Jason. blows him in half basically yeah. like he is just a bunch of limbs and they leave his body parts where the uh nano where the nanotech is were. yeah and they leave the room the nanobots come in and they repair jason and they turn him into cyber jason the new jason which is uber jason beyond reaching literally what he's called reaching <laughs> this is where they jump the shark this is like I don't know. The first couple scenes in the movie, good. Okay, I, I like it. After that, they start just jumping the shark everywhere. Have an android, check. Android beats up Jason, check. Jason's now a cyborg. Okay, sure. Yeah. We're, we're going somewhere here. I mean, I, I have my opinions on that and why they did it, but we'll get there at the end. Yeah. Because it's really frustrating, and I, I feel like they ruined a possible good movie in space. Well, they can't fuck with Jason now, so now they're just running away, and Jason's killing everyone while they're trying to get Dude, to the EVA. When Jason punches through the hole of the ship, that was like, I was like, okay, see, that's the kind of shit we could have done hours ago and not even needed to make an Uber Jason. It's Jason. You don't have to give him a nano suit to make him some all-powerful thing. He right. already is. Man, it was just, like you said, jumping the shark. It wasn't even worth it, it's, or it's not even needed. We we already can do these things. We don't need to make up reasons to do well, these things. Well, if Jason finds his machete, at least. He finds his machete, and oh, he, kills, he kills the professor dude who yeah. he killed hey him guys, earlier. it's okay. He, he just, just wanted his machete. Oh, <laughs> so fucking stupid. So fucking stupid. No offense, but this guy's a fucking moron. He's a professor. He's a little milk toast. Oh my uh, gosh. This regardless of how milk toasty this piece of shit professor is, that was before he got his upgrade. He. Oh yeah, and the so and the and KM fourteen got her ass kicked. Yeah, she got her. She get her head. Her head gets knocked off. Yeah, she's fine though. Don't worry, guys. And then the uh, the crystal leak scene. They throw yes, him yeah, in yeah, a yeah. the VR. They throw him into a virtual reality simulation. May I? Yes, sir. Want to have some or want to smoke some pot, and then we can have premarital sex. We love premarital sex, and then we jump into our sleeping bags. Well, they and forgot they, they took their clearly, tops off. They take their top. Well, I mean, freaking, I she offers him beer too. <laughs> she drinks a beer. She's like, "You want some beer?" Yeah. And he's like, "You want smoke some pot?" That scene, that scene was supposed to be so much bigger. The idea was that they'd have tons of girls and guys, counselors, mm -hmm. camp counselors, and a giant orgy going on. And Pamela Voorhees, Jason's mother, was supposed to be brought back. Okay. But um, what's her name? Uh, Betsy Palmer uh -huh. turned down the uh, turned down the role. Who could blame her? She said no way. Um, and then so what they did was they took this gratuitous scene where the casting the lady in charge of casting said i'm not doing i'm not doing casting for this this is ridiculous it's just a uh, gratuitous scene uh for the sake of nudity um and they agreed with her so they decided we'll cast two women and we'll do a smaller scene we'll do something as an homage hat tip to part seven well, did you see Jason's face like when they were right there and they got in their sleeping bags? Like he was having a hard time deciding which one to kill first. Yeah, yeah, he just So, you know, obviously Jason's the smart the smart man in this situation despite the brain comment they said in the beginning of the film. Yeah, I have it written down, but I just uh, we blew through it. Poor guy, poor guy. Like 
his brain's so small. And then she insults her boyfriend. Anyhow, he picks up. But then up... she gives a comment and says how big his penis must be. Oh, yeah. But he picks up the sleeping bag of one of the the nubile youths and beats the shit of the other one with it, killing two birds. So with good. One stone. <laughs> so good. Um, and by the way, that actually happens in Friday the 13th, part seven. And Kane Hodder, uh, he actually improvised that kill scene. It was something that he was just tired of doing what they asked him to do over and over again. So finally, he just grabbed the sleeping bag and in rage, just slammed the damn thing against the tree and then dropped it and walked away. And then it's funny now we've seen it hat tipped in uh, Jason X. And then you also get it in the remake. You get the same kill redone, but with not not with Kane Hodder in the suit. But anyways, uh, just, I, just fun. Yeah. That's my favorite kill in the movie. The frozen face one is my favorite probably effect in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My opinion on this movie is that I absolutely hate it. Well, I they... can't, I can't, I can't, um, I don't ever want to watch this movie again. Let's talk I, about... You couldn't pay me to watch this movie again, Clark. Let's talk about Brodsky real quick. I mean, this I is... liked him. He gets, he gets hurt. They repair him. He gets hurt again. He gets repaired. I don't know if he gets hurt more than twice, but... He comes back and he has a fist fight with Jason right at the end. And it's like they're the the everyone's off on their the the three heroes of the story, the cyborg, the the lady from the past. And Sonar Sonar? Whoever the technical geek is. Yeah. Those three are surviving, and then you have Broski fist fighting with Jason, and then Jason's about to come towards their evac ship, and he's like got his machete and he's flying towards them and Brodsky just flies and catches him and they hurl towards Earth 2 where we see Jason fall down like a shooting star pointed out by some kids at Camp Crystal Lake I believe yeah. is the name on Earth on 2. On Earth 2. Yeah. They make a wish on it. And then I'm fairly certain they're going to go investigate that meteor that landed. Mm. Wouldn't you? Obviously. I've seen a uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I know where this is going to take me. Fuck this movie. Was it an episode of Stargate? Was it Star Trek Star Trek Deep Space Nine or whatever the hell it's called? I'm so done with this movie. Thank God it's over. <laughs> How do we get off this ship? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Die? Could you, like, beam us off or something? Oh, yeah. That beam was... us off? That was a good one. Uh, yeah. Our scans reveal him to be very dead. Could your scans be wrong? I think you just get rid of him, Professor. He's too dangerous. This film's hot garbage. I don't even... We're, no. We're yeah. I keep diving well, down. Well, Rowan was a very attractive heroine. I, I'll give them that. They had... They did pick a very good heroine. I don't I don't think she's... Um, hey, women in film. Or women yeah. in horror, you know. We're filming this in February. We're recording this in February, but unfortunately, it'll be released in I March. I think she's been on some some decent films let me make sure here well, let me let me jump into the fun facts and trivia while you look do it up. cool so the first fun fact and trivia and my favorite part is that cronenberg was in this film he played dr wimmer at the very beginning of the movie as a favor um to the director of this film uh, mr james isaac so basically the story is that he lent his crew to uh, isaac lent his crew to cronenberg for a project and then Cronenberg asked in return that he would be some small bit role and get killed in the beginning of the Jason movie was mm-hmm. what he wanted to do. So, hey, wish granted. Uh, this was the least censored film in the franchise. Really? All the Jason films, yes. They still cut a lot of the kills out. Like, they're, you could still have, you could see them in the original cut if you really want to, but... But it was the least censored. Yeah. They let him do a lot more with it. Mm. Uh, this was the first film to rely heavily on CGI instead of practical effects for death and gore. Heavily. So that answers our question. It wasn't completely. It was just heavily. So there are some good practical effects that we get throughout it. Statistically, one of the most successful films in the franchise post-theater sales. That's interesting. Oh my god, she's Talia al Ghul? In Arrow, yeah. <gasps> she's, uh, she's in a lot of kind of fiction shows, a lot of... Uh... She's in Andromeda. She's in uh, Smallville. Let's see, who is she in Smallville? Doctor Christina Lamel. Oh yeah, well, yeah. her and her and KM fourteen, Lisa Ryder, they both do Andromeda together, right? And they flip roles. So I believe Rowan is the droid, 
And Lisa Ryder's character is actually the human being mm. that becomes friends with the droid later on. So they like have reverse roles from this movie to when they did that. Because, fun fact for you, the two of them actually had a tight schedule to do this film because they actually had to get to uh, filming Andromeda Season 1, Lickety Split. Mm. Um, so this had to be done by a certain date. Otherwise, too bad, so sad. Figure it out. Fix your shit. Okay, let's see here. Todd, Todd Farmer based much of the film on Alien, even naming one of the characters Dallas after Tom Carrot's character in said film. I didn't even know. Like, I just, I automatically connected it to Alien. I'm like, this is Alien, but you're putting Jason in there. You think people aren't going to figure that out? Yeah. You're a smart man, smarter than most. That's... But I'm telling you, fans of Alien are easily going to be able to tell this is a complete, like, story ripoff. Um you know what? Maybe it's not so much of a ripoff. Maybe it's an homage. I'm giving him too much credit. Several of the characters in this film are named after Todd Farmer's EverQuest buddies. That's a fun fact. That is a fact I never needed to know. The Grendel spaceship is named after the monster in... The Grendel that is Beowulf. Beowulf, yes. Space debris floating can be seen with a Cunningham real uh, Realty sign... This was a nod to Noel Cunningham, son of the original executive producer of Friday the 13th. Mm, mm. And that's it Well, there's fun facts and trivia from me. And they, the one thing I want to add <laughs> is the, the, this, the first scene where Jason kind of gets off the... He's, he's chained up. He's being held. He's suspended. He gets out, and they don't show how he gets out. But the uncut scene... This guy's girl, the guard's girlfriend comes over, gives him brownies, which in a high security base, why would a girlfriend be allowed in the first place? But puts a blanket over him. She takes a picture and the blanket removes like an IV giving him sedated sedatives. And he, he gets out for whatever reason and starts. See, I like, I, I mean, I like that. At least I that answers too. the question. I would have rather had he... that in the film. Yeah. I feel if there isn't a director's cut of this film, because I didn't get to watch a director's cut. I watched just I'm the. Not watching a director's cut. Of I this watched film. the regular theatrical cut. If there was yeah. a director's cut that could promise me more gore and less story, I might be willing to watch that. So we might we, be. so breaking the fourth wall. We watched this and Leprechaun Four for this recording session. Yeah. And uh, out of the two movies, they're so similar. I'm glad we didn't screw up though. No, we, we didn't we, screw up a single piece. No, we didn't. We didn't at all. Well, that's because we made the mistakes before we started the episode. Hey, 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 that you didn't have to tell them. <laughs> well, they know now. Curtain. There was a curtain. The man behind the curtain. Don't look at the man behind <laughs> the curtain. The two guys behind the curtain. Don't, Don't worry look. about what we're doing. Uh, anyhow, uh, Curtis. <laughs> yes, out of sir. All the Friday the 13th movies you've seen, is this. This is the worst one. This is legitimately the legitimately worst one that the you worst think. One. Okay. Um, and that I, includes uh, Telepathic Part 7. I, I would take that over this any day. That was the, the, the yeah, telekinetic girl. Yeah, it's She's either like six breaks. or seven, I can't remember. I actually liked seven because it showed his face and you never got a, you didn't really get to see that. No, and it was, it was like a zombified, yeah. you know, grotesque man. No, it Worms looked right. are coming out of yeah. it. That was when they're, they're shooting movies out left and right. And mm -hmm. When they stopped Tommy Jarbles. We need more Tommy Jarbles. We do need more Tommy Jarbles. Yeah. Corey Feldman looking for work? I don't know, but they they can always replace him with the new Tommy Tommy Jarbles. I mean, or another one even after that. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with the the Jason franchise, by the way, with the Friday the Thirteenth? I know there's a lot of legal Stuck troubles. Stuck in legal troubles is all is all I know. So while we're we're talking about Jason X, let's uh -huh. talk about the legal troubles a little bit. I think that'd be interesting. So the only the only pieces that I know is that the original writer is holding on to Jason like there is no tomorrow. Um, and Paramount is also getting their hands greedy, if I remember right. Mm. New Line was a saving grace, but doesn't have rights to Friday the 13th. That's what the real problem is. Jason and the Friday the 13th series. If you want to make a Jason film, I believe you can, but you can't have Friday the 13th or any of its continuity, if I remember right. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm reading here is it looks like Cunningham and the writer, Victor Miller, began mm -hmm. a dispute on who actually owns the copyright, and the judge ruled in favor of Miller when it came to the rights of the original film, which is why the game, Friday the 13th, can't get the original movie's content added to it. And that game is dead in the water anyway. But um, 
it looks like the legal battle might end on June twentieth this year. That's yeah. That's that'd be really that's great. Soon. Yeah, but this is Screen Rant, so don't trust Screen Rant because it is a bunch of hearsay without any citation, which I see none. Well, what have you watched, read, or experienced lately? Oh, man. Well, I'm playing this great game with a good friend of mine. It's called uh, Hunt Showdown. <laughs> you go out, you, you pew-pew zombies, you pew-pew giant spiders, and I don't know what else because I've only seen spiders so far, and you get shot by other players. Yeah, there's a real... Um, I'm that other friend he was talking about. And there's a really sad uh, part of the game that we don't like so far is the Battle Royale-esque yeah. where there's a bounty on something and you have to, you know, either you're first or you're, you're dead. And uh, yeah, we're not, we're not big on pew pew shooting each other and trying to survive. So we'll see if that grows. We'll see if that grows. So otherwise, like getting the bounties, that stuff's fine. It's just meeting up with other players and yeah. most of the time they just want to shoot you. Yeah, thanks for roping me into that game, by the way. Well, you roped me into this. <laughs> I did, yeah. No, I'm, yeah, I'm being genuine. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. It's fun. Yeah. It's I a know. change of pace from Dead by Daylight. I can give you that. Yeah, well, I definitely need that. The Dead by Daylight grind, though, for me, is real. I can't stop. I've, Won't I've, stop. I'm taking a break. But Well, the only thing I've done in the in, since our last episode is I watched the original Suspiria again nice uh mr argento and it's i gotta say like the music that goblins does in that film is phenomenal it really sets the tone and the emotion and the feeling and then just the movie in general like mm. witches i'm not a big fan of witches in other ways but like i don't know what it is i i go back to that movie at least once a year if not twice a year now i'm getting ready to watch um the remake again too because i found that one to be a lot of fun but yeah uh, if you yeah. haven't seen the original suspiria go check it out it's really good i like it i think i will someday i think we will have to someday cool well now it's time for a plug follow us at the number two guys horror pod on twitter and instagram um, we are posting fairly regularly. Um, we're doing a little bit of fun stuff right now where we're posting like our favorite vampire horror films. So I posted my top five, uh, earlier today, and then I'll be posting Clark's later on and we're getting pretty good numbers back from people engaging and checking those out. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing zombie movies, our top 10 horror films that we, that we like. Um, and then, you know, that's just to get to know us a little bit better and, and what are our uh, favorites are. Um, but yeah, if there's any questions that you guys want us to answer, uh, you can tweet us, you can send us DMs, um, or you can email us at to the number or to the word guys and some horror at gmail.com and we will respond and possibly read your emails live on air. Anything else from you, Clark? No, thank you for uh, coming on this ride with us. It's been wild. Thanks, guys. Um, unique New York. Unique you New York. Unique New York. Unique you New York. Unique New York.